Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We're going to take a look at what many Americans and people throughout the world are doing right now, and that is we're sitting on our keisters, uh, and maybe for hours at a time, without getting up, without stretching. We're going to talk to an old friend of ours. She has aged a little bit. I'm sorry, she just has. We have not. Uh, her name is Mary Ann Ryan. She's a physical therapist based in New York City. And uh, her book is called Baby Bot. She sold over 20,000 units. Wow! That's amazing. Um, Mary Ann, uh, uh, welcome back to Late Night Health. The last time we talked, uh, we talked about how sit ups are not good to get rid of that pouch. But Let's talk about how the fact is that we are all sitting. We're telecommuting. We're working mm-hmm. hard at our desks, and we just don't get up. We don't do enough. And I know for a fact that my lower back is just killing me most of the time. Well, I mean, I, you don't even have to ask a, a physical therapist. Everybody knows that they shouldn't really be sitting all day long. So what I tell patients is to set their iPhone or whatever phones they have set an alarm that every half hour that they get up and they walk around it used to be to go to the water cooler now it might be to check out what snacks <laughs> is in the refrigerator um and to do some stretches i know that the refrigerator is 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 a a no-no for me i will look at it i think daryl you said this last week you you go in you look at it yeah, you shut but, the door. Yeah, everything's too complicated when it comes out of there. <laughs> yeah, and and well, you keep daughter, going back. You, my daughter said to get about the freshman fifteen. It's the COVID nineteen. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people it, tend to be snacking. Right. I mean, we should be eating celery and carrots and putting the Lorna dunes down and not eating those. Uh, so, but if I stretch, a lot of people may not stretch properly, right? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you have to think that if you're sitting and you're kind of slumped forward, you have to do the opposite to give your body a break. And it shouldn't just be sustained stretching where you just hold the position. It should be, you should repeat it going into, you know, bending forward then going backwards. So one of my favorite things of telling people while you're sitting is that you clasp your fingers or you intertwine your fingers and put it behind your neck and you have your elbows bent and what you can do is bend backwards over your chair, and that'll help both stretch out your mid-back or your upper back and also your neck in the opposite direction. And then things like standing up and bringing your foot towards your, you know, with one leg, bring your foot towards your buttocks so that you're stretching out the front of your thighs and your hip flexors because everything has been shortened while you're sitting for so long. The other so wait trick a second. I'm standing up. Hold on a second. Sitting positions. Physical therapists used to teach people that they must sit at a 90 degree, degree angle in their hips and and their knees, and that their arms should be bent to 110 degrees. And you know, tons of studies have shown that sitting in one position can actually cause damage. So there is no one ergonomic position. The trick is to try to pick a few positions to choose throughout the day and to constantly change it all right you mentioned something and i want to go back to it so i'm standing up and i bring my knee up toward my chest or do i extend it back toward my butt Mm -hmm. so stand on one leg put one hand on your desk and then say you you're standing on your left leg you bring your right foot up to your buttocks so that you're bending your knee and you're straightening your hip and that stretches it. both your knee and also the um, front of your thigh and your hip flexors. And you do that, what, two or three times and then the other side? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, and it's just several breaks throughout the day are the most important thing. Just get up. Some people have a standing desk. If you stand all day, then that's not good, too. So it's like stand for part of the day it for, for part of the day and another trick to using a standing desk is to have a nice mat like a, something a chef would have in, in their uh, kitchen to kind of soften the blow if you have a really hard floor it's going to be hard on your back if you're standing the whole day 
Got it. Uh, I've tried. Uh, I've tried uh, uh, writing because I do a lot of writing and standing yeah, I heard up. I you have a book coming out. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, Growing Old Sucks, but it doesn't have to. Uh, written with a friend of ours, uh, Servette uh, Hassan, and uh, it'll be coming out as we as we end the COVID-19 pandemic, the book will be available, and we're really excited about it. Um, oh, good. You're going to send me a, cop- a signed copy? I'm going to send it to you. I'll send it to you uh, uh, when we get off the air today. How's that? That sounds great. I'll do an Amazon review for you. All right. It's not there yet. But we'll we'll talk okay. about that. What, what about ergonomic chairs? I mean, some of these chairs uh, can be two and three thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, and are they worth the money? Well, it depends on the chair. Um, it also depends on the sizing of the chair. There's things like the Herman Miller has two or three different sizes of each chair, because the typical chair is made for, I believe, somebody who's five ten. Even workstations, when I had um, a customized desk made for me, I actually had it down to, I think it was uh, 27 inches, where the normal desks are about 30 inches. And that fit because I'm 5'6", so that was actually at the right height for me. And now with the chairs, up the seat depth from where your buttocks goes against this chair back to where your knees bend, that's the depth of the seat. Um, can be very long for me, and I'm five six. It's not like I'm a very small person. Wait so, a second. Um, if you're five six, you know, I have a picture of us. Marianne, Marianne, if you're mm-hmm. five six, I'm five ten. Daryl, <laughs> I'm not five ten. Uh, not today. <laughs> no, I must have been wearing platform <laughs> shoes. Um, no. <laughs> All right, a five five and a half. I'll admit it. <laughs> All right, got it. Little shrinkage there. Um, my, uh, so should you? How do you determine what size desk you should have? The desks usually don't come in different heights, you know, because the general popular the, the most furniture are made for men, especially office furniture. And um, there's like a standard that they're usually 30 inches high. But there are desks that are adjustable so that you can adjust the height of it. And um, other things that you can do is if you can't adjust the height of your um, desktop, maybe you can get a, a keyboard tray and use that um, that's adjustable and you can lower it so that you feel comfortable, you know, typing. Um, when I was writing my book, I used both a laptop and then I would alternate with a, um, a Bluetooth keyboard so that uh, I would use different ergonomics during, you know, uh, throughout the, the days that I was writing. And, and what, about, sure what, about a, mm-hmm. what about a step? I've got a foot placement. I don't know what it's, what it's called. It's a step. And I put my feet mm-hmm. flat on that and it it mm-hmm. it elevates my knees and it's mm-hmm. much more comfortable that's that's me. exactly one of the tricks that i give patients also you know that i tell patients to use also and that's because it what what, what happens is that if your chair is a little too high for you since you're not a very tall person <laughs> mark um, thank you your feet are basically dangling and that actually causes the hip flexors those are the um, muscles in the front of the hip to actually get strained because it's working throughout the whole entire day to hold your body up rather than if your feet are a little bit you know supported um, you wouldn't have to do that so that's something smart that you're doing oh well at least I'm doing something smart listen Marianne thank you very much do you have a website for us yes I do and it's um, www.babybodbook.com. So it's baby, bod, B-O-D, book. And I have a great blog, and we'll be putting this interview in the, on the blog shortly. Oh, well, hey, thank you. Also, uh, by the way, um, uh, Marianne does telemedicine, and uh, uh, you can find out more, I'm sure, at babybodbook.com. As the pandemic goes on, we're going to ask Marianne to come back and give us some more tips and uh, on on what to stand, how to walk, and all that. Um, we're out of time, Marianne. Thank you very much. I'm Mark Allen. 
along with the insane Daryl Wayne, we'll be back. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. Opening your heart is the only way to allow all the light in. Unconditional love does exist, but it takes trust, something not a lot of people are willing to give. But how can you expect it if you don't provide it too? All hearts are refillable, rechargeable, and renewable. So why worry about being burned? By giving, you have everything to gain. Think of how beautiful your life would be if someone loved you without barriers, gave all of their heart to you without conditions, and wrapped their soul around you like it was your last day on earth. Today, you can be that person for someone else. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHealth.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Our guest, of course, is Robert Clancy, our regular contributor. He is uh, the author of Guide to the Soul, The Messenger, and much, much more. Actually, it's funny. I was thinking about Robert last night because it's his birthday today, but I was on Amazon, and uh, Robert's book, The Messenger, popped up as a recommendation to me, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, Happy birthday, Robert. And today you're going to talk about motivation. And I think we all need motivation during these trying times. Absolutely. And uh, so my inspirational thought is you need only move beyond any barriers around your heart to realize they were never needed. And a lot of times uh, motivation comes from within. And right now, especially during the sheltering and the, you know, if you're isolated, trying to maintain and stay busy. So I have a really good friend of mine that, that sets a schedule. And uh, it's almost like uh, in martial arts, you compete against yourself. So when you use that kind of philosophy, um, you're not really competing against anyone else. And if you can use that in your home environment and set your goals and set things, you really have to answer to yourself when you when you have these things. And to stay motivated, that's, that's doing some exercise, that's maybe learning 
something new, reading a book, whatever it is that you have to do. And it's really important to keep those things uh, there and stay motivated during this time. I know that one of the things that I do now that I'm working, you know, from the house all the time and not visiting clients is that I get dressed. Now, it's been hot here in Southern California, so I am wearing shorts, but instead of just wearing a ratty old T-shirt, I'm wearing, you know, I, the other day I put on a, a, a dress shirt. Um, uh, I'll put on a nice polo shirt. It just kind of makes me feel like I'm going to work. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, setting some type of routine or something that's going to put you in that that space is good. So, you know, definitely um, it, it's all helpful. And uh, to, to create that sense of normalcy in your life will maintain some type of balance for you as well. And then, you know, accepting the things that you can't change is also important. Motivation doesn't, you said it, it comes from within, but can't you be motivated from outside as well? Uh, we, just, For example, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, our first guest today is a doctor. He's been volunteering 10 to 14 hours a day in New York City, working with patients who have COVID-19 and seeing patients who think they have COVID-19. His motivation is coming from within, but it's also from the community because he he knows they need him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that that's also part of it is um, having some type of belonging. And, uh, again, connecting with family and friends is another way to do that and knowing that you're still needed there and, and the communication that happens. And so, you know, as, as I, I think I, I mentioned to you on uh, a week or two ago, that uh, just connecting with friends and reaching out to others and being that way can also motivate you because, you know, it gives them some sense of normalcy. And that's really what the, the crux of the motivation is, is to get some kind of balance and bring that in there and then feel needed in the community or needed with others in those circles that you have. Have you met anybody, talked to anybody, Zoomed or Skyped with anybody you haven't seen in a number of years due to the pandemic? Uh, there's been, actually, uh, I did have a chat. Um, it was a text chat, uh, you know, through Messenger. But, yeah, there was a, a drummer from high school. So that, that's 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Oh, my. Ago, you know, or so. So, yeah, and we were talking about he found some tapes, like, because he was home, because he sheltered, he was going through some old boxes and found some of our band tapes and different songs and things that we did, and we're trying to figure out who's playing what, who was singing on it, and all those things. Interesting. Hey, Daryl, have you met anybody? Have you done that? My uh, sister sent me um, an envelope uh, that had uh, pictures from uh, elementary school, which she oh, found my. when she was sorting through some of my mom's stuff. It was like the whole class picture, you know, everybody had their little right. picture on a sheet of paper. So I had posted something on the, uh, there's a user site or something for friends of the, where I went to elementary school. I posted something saying, I've got all these pictures and, and is anybody interested? So yeah, the past couple of days I've, I've uh, sort of stirred the pot a little bit and heard from some people I haven't heard from in a long time, but uh, it's because it was inspired by these pictures, not necessarily the virus. Ah, interesting. But the virus caught your sister to sit down yeah. and... <laughs> Ultimately, it was what probably uh, inspired that action. I was and, talking and maybe people to wouldn't. Maybe people normally would not uh, have reacted or, or been, uh, you know, interested in it as much if this doesn't exist because it it makes you everybody look at their own morality at this point. Yeah. No. Absolutely, uh, Robert. I, we did a. Uh, I did a, a virtual cocktail hour last Friday with some friends, and I met. I'm uh, a couple invited uh, my wife, Carol, and I to join their cocktail party. And there were four or five other people. And we just chatted for over an hour. It was kind of fun. Yeah. And, and that's part of it, you know, just creating something. You know, you can, you can have virtual dinners too. You know, you can yeah. just set your, 
your camera up and, uh, you know, put your food on one side and have the others on the other side. And I, I did, uh, you know, a couple of those things where we had like a happy hour and, you know, you can, you can just have a whole bunch of people join or, uh, you know, just uh, different chats that are going on. But yeah, the uh, technology is definitely helping close some of those those gaps and, and you know, creating those bridges. But I've also noticed when I'm on my walks and, um, you know, other people are out, you know, on this, this country road that I go uh, do like a three, three and a half to seven mile uh, power walk every day. And, uh, you know, everybody's smiling and, and you say hi, or even in the bad weather, we were out there, there were a couple of them out there with me. And I was like, yeah, I yelled across to them like it's diehards are out here. And, you know, I put a smile on somebody's face. That's kind of the key. And your motivation to do that three and a half mile to seven mile walk, even during bad weather, inclement weather, comes from within? Yeah, I mean, I was swimming, as you know, 20, 20 laps a day, every day, of the, you know, every day of the week, pretty much, other than Saturdays when I teach martial arts. And, you know, staying motivated to replace that. It took me a while to figure out what I could do to replace that. Um, and I've got a, several different exercises in order to do what I got from the swimming. So now I have, you know, this power walk, and I, I do a set a goal, like I'll try to beat my time. So I do three and a half miles, and if you do walk three miles, it's on average, it's about an hour. Um, I've gotten it down to three and a half miles in 46 minutes was my best time so far. Wow. That's really, that's almost a run. Almost. It's it's Almost. really taken long stride, very fast, and you got to keep that up. And then I check at the turn when I'm making the turn. Where am I? And I check the time there, and I know if I have to kind of push it further. You know, if I get there and it's like 24 minutes, or is it 26 minutes, 27 minutes at the turn? Um, so I got this dialed in, and it's kind of a you know that's what motivates me is to I beat that time. Can I beat that time? And you get back, and I'm like, oh my god! I, and then I see I got like two minutes, and I'm like still a half mile out and I've got to cover that ground. <laughs> do you have do you have the uh, the software the pedometer uh, that uh, tracks your uh, your your steps? Uh, Apple Watch. I'm sorry, say that again? So it, the Apple Watch. Yes, oh, the Apple Watch does that. Got it. Got it. Well, we're out of time as we are at the end of our show, and we appreciate your uh, being here. Robert Clancy has been our guest. We've been talking about motivation. Uh, you can find out more about Robert by going guide to the soul dot com, guide to the soul dot com, and uh, find out what's happening with Robert and all of the things that he's up to. And uh, it just occurred to me, Daryl, quickly, what's your website? The latest from the greatest dot com. Latest from the greatest dot com. And of course, you can visit us at late night help dot com. I'm Mark Allen for the insane Daryl Wayne. Have a good week, everybody. And most importantly, at this time, have a safe week. Have a healthy week. We'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's carbon-60 is the premium carbon-60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize-winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin and cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his carbon-60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com.